In this video, we will be debunking or confirming certain myths and stereotypes, not only about Austin, but also about Texas. And to get some out of the way, no, we don't ride horses everywhere, no, we don't live on farms and ranches, and no, we don't all have a southern twang. And with those obvious ones out of the way, now we can dig a little deeper and talk about the other popular myths and stereotypes that we often hear about Austinites and Texans, some of which are from my own experience that I've heard in my personal life a lot. Others will be certain misconceptions that we've actually heard from clients that we've helped move here in the past. And so if you're wanting to know a little bit more about what is either true or untrue, stay tuned. Hello again, everybody. In this video, you will catch me in an especially good mood because for the longest time, I was told again and again and again, do not wear blue in your videos. And that is simply because of the green screen. And I always had a bone to pick because they said, even though it is called a green screen, it applies to both the colors green and blue. And it really pissed me off because I love wearing the color blue. And so today I decided to experiment a little bit and see what I could get away with and what I couldn't. And this denim button up happens to be one of my most favorite shirts. So I gave it a shot and turns out it works just fine. And we are back in business wearing blue. I don't have to keep wearing black or beige or white or gray. I guess any other color. <laughs> Anyways, if this is your first time in the channel, my name is Frank and I'm part of an ever-expanding team at the award-winning J.B. Goodwin Brokerage right here in the fabulous Austin, Texas. Each and every week, we put out tons of new content all in regards to living in Austin, Texas, whether it be the pros and cons, the cost of living, vlog tours of certain areas and suburbs, comparisons of cities and states, and so much more like this one. So if you haven't already, consider tapping the subscribe button and ringing the little bell so that you're notified each and every time we put out a new video. Ever since starting this YouTube channel, Living in Austin, Texas, we've put quite a bit of work into it and we've had such a blast as well. But the coolest part have been the reach outs we've been getting from people, not just in the country, but around the world, which is just pretty exciting. So if you're either in Austin and you're wanting to sell or you're from anywhere else and you're wanting to come to Austin, that is what we are here for. So be sure to give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email any day of the week, any time of day. It's what we love to do, so we do it. And now without further ado, let's get right into those myths and stereotypes about Austin and about Texas and see what is true and what's not true. And again, this is based on my own personal life experience from what I've heard from people, and it's based on the clients that we've helped and what they were expecting coming here and what their reality was. So number one on the list is going to be the myth, for some reason, that Austin is gorgeous. And even though I live here, even though I am a local Austinite, I'm here to tell you it is not gorgeous. <laughs> now, does it have pretty spots? Absolutely. Is suburbia nice and green full of lush trees and gardens and fields and parks? Absolutely. Are there different places to hike? Absolutely. Places to canoe, paddleboard, take your boat out? Absolutely. However, if you are coming from a place like Northern California, if you're coming from a place like Montana, Salt Lake City, Washington State, so on and so forth, you will be let down when you get to Austin, Texas. I think this is a myth because so many people move here all the time, especially Californians, but we're getting to that. And so people naturally think, oh, the reason why is it must be, yes, obviously a cheaper alternative, but something that's parallel in beauty and, and scenery, and it's simply not the case. It used to be just farm and ranch here, not anymore, but it used to be, and so the landscape is just flat. It's, it's, it's not necessarily stunning, even though you will find some pretty spots. So I wanted to squash that real quick. I remember one of the tours that we took some clients on a few months back, <laughs> we were met with this sort of underwhelming, like, oh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Where the, their eyes are wide and they're excited and they're wanting to see all the beauty that Austin has to offer. And <laughs> Um, it's not horrible, I'm not saying it's ugly, unless you're really close to like major freeways and things like that, but it's not necessarily going to wow you the way you might think it could. 
segueing into the next stereotype and or myth, and that would be that Austin is full of Californians. And it's true. <laughs> now, is everyone you meet going to be Californian? No, but let's say you have a group of 10 people that you pull off the street. I'd say a good four or five of them are probably going to be from California, absolutely. But like I said, it is not because, wow, you know what we love about living in, say, the Bay Area, or all the beauty? I can't wait to go to Austin and experience the same beauty. No, like I said, it's, it's not the case. What really draws Californians here, at least in most cases, is yes, the affordability of Austin, Texas, and the politics as well. I've heard a lot of arguments that Californians on politics are causing them to be unhappy where they're living, so they're all flocking to Texas and repeating the same history. And that might be true to some extent, but really, in my mind, in my experience in real estate, it almost always is about the price. And just as an example, my mother, who used to live in the Bay Area in Fremont, lived in a house in the 70s that was 1,600 square feet, about three bedrooms, two bathrooms, small backyard, and they bought it for about $36,000, which is astronomically cheap compared to today's prices, and sold it for about $72,000. I think the year was 1978. Now, that same home, we looked it up, that same home in Fremont, today, in 2021, like I said, three bed, two bath, 1,600 square feet, several decades old, is now worth $1.4 million. And that alone tells you, because if you come to Austin, even with a budget of 400, 500, $600,000, you can buy so much more bang for your buck here. Homes near golf courses, four or five or six bedrooms, a pool in the backyard, nice suburbia, a new neighborhood, possibly even a theater room. And now imagine what $1.4 million could buy you in Austin, Texas. Honestly, depending on which part, you could probably get a mansion with that money. And so yes, that myth, that stereotype is absolutely true. Austin is full of Californians. The memes these days are absolutely endless. It's a running inside joke amongst local Austinites who were here before. And so if you're coming here from California, I don't mean to offend, you'll fit right in with all the other Californians that came here. And if you're not from California and you're coming here, get used to the idea of coming to the California of Texas, which is Austin. Now the next one I get a bit of a chuckle from, and that would be that everyone here in Austin, Texas drives a truck. And that is also not true. However, I will say you see a lot more trucks here than probably just about anywhere else that you'll move to. We've had some clients in the past say, if I'm coming to Texas, will I have to buy a truck just to fit in? And it's one of those, no, <laughs> no, you won't. You know, a lot of people don't drive trucks here. A lot of them do. And personally, I think you'll find that the closer to the city that you are, you're gonna see a lot more Priuses, for example further away from the city you get, you will definitely find a lot more trucks. So much so that there's even Texas editions of trucks, which I didn't even think could be a thing, but lots of different trucks that, you know, model name, Texas edition, and you see the big Texas badge on it, like, yeah, we're, we're Texas tough. You know, it, it's definitely a stereotype. Um, and I will say that, I don't know if I wanna say majority, Maybe a slight majority of people here are truck drivers. I think on the street I grew up in alone, it's just full of trucks. And it's not even like I grew up in a super Texan Western part of Austin either. I grew up in a very normal, balanced part of Austin and it was still full of trucks. So is the stereotype true that everyone drives them? Of course not. And I know it's not meant to be taken literally anyway, but you will see your fair share. Now, before moving on, be sure to drop a comment down below, whether you agree with me, whether you disagree with me, if you have ideas for future videos we can make for you guys, or questions for us to answer, we would absolutely love to get involved. In addition, consider liking this video as well, as it really helps our channel grow, hooks us up with the YouTube algorithm, and tells us that we're doing a good enough job providing value for you. And last but not least, if you've got a parent, a sibling, a child, a friend, anyone you know who is coming to Austin, Texas, go ahead and share our videos as well and spread the good word. All right, now next on this list of myths and stereotypes about Austinites or Texans, and that would be that everyone here has a gun. And I'm here to tell you that is absolutely not true. You might find in the more rural parts of Texas, yeah, there's gonna be some gun owners who are very adamant about owning their guns. But in Austin, it's really not 
as, as big of a thing as you expect it to be, right? Because you hear all the talk in the media and things like that about the conversation about guns and naturally Texas being the Southern and Texan has that stereotype that we all have a bunch of guns and that we'd show them off, we display them and you know what I mean? And it's simply not true. Now, in defense of that myth, in defense of that stereotype, even in my own circle of people I know in my life, a handful of them do have guns. And here it's just a very normal thing. And what's interesting is that those friends I have in mind who do own guns, they're not even conservative. So that stereotype isn't even true, right? I think it's more of a Texan thing to have a gun, traditionally speaking, than it even is a political thing. But yes, if you are coming to Austin and the stereotype and the myth is weighing on your mind that everyone's going to have a gun, rest assured they're not. It's just more common here. It's just like if someone tells you, yeah, I've got a Glock in my glove compartment, you know, it's like, cool. All right. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's not like a wow factor here, but not everyone's going to have one. See, it's kind of, it's pretty balanced in my opinion. But again, that is specific to Austin. I cannot guarantee when you get out of Austin into more country-like areas that you won't see more of them. And just for the record, I'd like to state, the people I know who have guns, they're not trigger happy. They're not always whipping them out and showing people. And I think a lot of people who do have guns are often misunderstood, which is just part of that myth and that stereotype. Now, don't get me wrong, a lot of people who have guns are that way, but many people I know who have them have them for self-protection, they keep them locked up. It's, it's very defensive, right? It's not like you're going on the offense with a gun and you're just quick to shoot anything that moves in your front yard. For me personally, I wouldn't even know how to work a gun, how to properly hold a gun, but I wanted to clear that misconception up. It's not always just these aggressive types, right? You have those, but a lot of it's just normal. All right, moving on to another humongous myth, another humongous stereotype, and that is that all Texans are white conservatives. And I'm here to tell you that is not the case. <laughs> yes, I acknowledge the fact I am Caucasian, but something really cool about Austin is how diverse it is. And I touch on this in a number of the videos that we've put out. Something great about Austin is that it's so well balanced and it's such a nice melting pot of different cultures and people from different walks of life. As I've said before, if you were to just take a walk down some suburban street with homes, you will find a blue sign and a red sign and a blue sign and a red sign and the neighbors coexist peacefully, they accept each other, they tolerate each other, and it's just a nice mix. And another thing is that aside from politics, Austin being such a hotspot for relocation, number one in the country to be exact, you are going to find people that not only have different complexions of skin, but people from Ireland, people from Canada, <laughs> people from Italy, people from France, different cultures, different creeds, and so on. And I think that's really cool because it tends to broaden one's own horizons and, and their perspectives on things and helps them grow as a person, I guess. Um, so if you are coming from a place that is maybe just a, a population of a thousand and you only know one thing, you might be in a bit of a culture shock in Austin because it has all the different colors of the rainbow here, uh, not just in the city, throughout the greater Austin area as well. So no, we are not all white conservatives. You do find a lot of that in different parts of Texas uh, and in certain parts of Austin, but as a whole, it's quite a melting pot, which is pretty cool. Now on the flip side, the other side of that coin, another stereotype I hear, oddly enough, in contrast to the last one, is that everyone in Austin is a liberal. And maybe downtown, yes, that's true. If you're in the metro area, if you're in the heart of the city, you are going to feel a strong liberal progressive presence. That is the nature of Austin. Austin, first and foremost, decades ago was a college town. And we know that most college towns, most college students are liberal anyways. So when that is ingrained in the fabric of a city, and then you add these decades and the culture, the way it evolves, it is naturally going to be, yes, a very liberal and progressive city. But the key word is a city. Austin itself is so much more, obviously, than just the city. You have the greater Austin area. You have all the different suburbs and towns and cities. And yes, some of them are going to lean more right wing. Some of them are going to be more conservative. You might see some Confederate flags. You might see a come and take it bumper sticker. But you're also going to see the equivalent of those bumper stickers for the left side all throughout the greater Austin area. So as I'm sure you've gathered by now, both of those stereotypes about white conservatism and everyone being a liberal, 
Neither of them are true because Austin really is like the yin and yang of the two. It really blends both of them together. So you might not like that. You might prefer it to be one way or the other. For me, I like it because it is a demonstration of unity. It's a demonstration of tolerance of everybody, you know, being kumbaya with each other and, and things of that nature. That's very much my thing. I like when just everyone gets along regardless of, of all the stuff we like to argue about. All right, now moving on from the touchy stereotypes from the controversial myths and now on to one that's a bit more laid back in general and relevant to this channel and that would be the myth that it is impossible to find a home if you're a buyer in Austin, Texas. I tell you, the amount of times I hear from people that reach out to us, well, I wanna to come to Austin, but I'm nervous because of the current housing market and I hear that prices are going up and that it's best just to wait if you're trying to be a buyer in this market. And I'm not trying to dismiss that because a lot of those claims are true to an extent, but the reality of the matter is People here close every day. Just our team a couple days ago, we had a closing. Not too long before that, we had another one. Is it more competitive? Absolutely. Are the days of trying to get a bargain done? Absolutely. Now it's about getting in, not getting a deal. But outside of that, it really boils down to who's going to bat for you as your agent. Who knows how to get deals accepted? Who is trained for this? That is what gets offers accepted in today's market. Not luck, it takes skill, it takes finesse, it takes a bit of a craft and an art, or very deep pockets and cash offers. Moving on to the next myth and or stereotype about living in Austin, Texas, and that would be that it is always hot. And I must say, if you've seen any of our other videos, I do drag Austin so much for the heat that we get here. Absolutely, I am someone who, the moment it goes above 80 degrees, I perspire. Sorry if that's too much information, but that is a pet peeve of mine. So I am the first to admit and to acknowledge that it is very hot here, but it's only for a certain amount of time of the year, specifically late May through late August. That's when it gets to the 90s. That's when it gets to the triple digits. That's when it feels like opening an oven and the heat slaps you and you see mirages outside and you have to roll down the windows of your car before you even get in it and just let it air out and cool off. It is absolute hell. Your bills for the month go up and up and up because of how much you're cranking that AC, how much you're watering your lawn. But from September to about April, the rest of the year, it's pretty nice. So instead of saying that Austin is always hot, which is false, I would say Austin is almost always warm. Now in, I'd say December, January, maybe into February, you're going to see 30s, maybe 40s, definitely 50s. Um, and every few years you're going to see some snow or what it really is, is sleet barring some catastrophic snowstorm like we actually just had. But aside from those winter months that get, as I said, to the 40s or 50s, the rest of it's going to be 60s, 70s, and 80s. And that's pretty much what it's like here, barring those intense summer months. So if you are coming from a place where it snows a majority of the year, you will be pleased and know you will not melt. However, you're going to want to stay inside during the summer. Now, if you're coming from a place like, say, Phoenix, where it is seemingly always hot, you will have a bit of a breath of fresh air here because like I said, it is pretty nice throughout most of the year. But now I'm just talking in circles. The myth, is it always hot in Austin, Texas? The answer is no. But does it get very hot in Austin, Texas for a little while? Absolutely, yes. And that little while, unfortunately, can feel like an eternity, hence the stereotype that it's always hot here. Here's another myth for you about Austin, Texas, and that is that Austin is just so dirt cheap, and that's why everyone comes here. And I did touch on this before. Is that why Californians come here? Absolutely, but that is more about California being so expensive than it is about Austin being so dirt cheap. The truth of the matter is, when looking at Dallas and Houston and San Antonio and other major cities in Texas, Austin is actually going to be the most expensive choice. Do you still get bang for your buck here? Absolutely, as I touched on before. But it is going to be the least affordable option, say if you are a first time home buyer or you're just wanting to watch your pennies or you're on a bit of a budget for whatever the reason is. I do not recommend Austin as your top 
spot on, on the list. You know, I'd recommend San Antonio, for example, which is very affordable, or even Houston or Dallas for that matter. In addition, something I like to say in so many of our videos that you might already know it's coming, let me hear it, the property taxes. Yes, I would be remiss if I did not mention those property taxes. It is a myth or a stereotype about Texas that, yes, we, we have no state income tax. Great, all the tech companies are coming here, everyone's flocking here, save money on no state income taxes. That is true. Um, however, the property taxes are the hidden small print of that umbrella of no state income taxes. Here in Texas, especially in Austin more than any other city, you're going to see tax rates of 2.5%, 2.75%, 3%, and even above 3%. And just to give you an idea, if say you're buying a house that is on the cheaper side by Austin standards, which is about $350,000, let's say, and you get a tax rate of two and a half, which is pretty fair here. That's just under nine grand a year in property taxes. If you're coming from a place where you're used to spending 1%, one and a half percent, you are in for the rudest awakening. So to circle back, no, Austin is not dirt cheap. That is not why everyone's coming here. It is cheaper than most other states, absolutely. New York, Washington, Oregon, California, of course. But by Texas's standards, in comparison to the rest of it, Austin is actually the most expensive. Your median right now is actually going to be around 380, but that is a misleading median because that accounts for the condos and the townhouses of the world. If we're talking about more residential homes for families, that median is going to be closer to 400,000, 450,000 and so on. All right, moving on to another that I hear so often and that is, hey, we're gonna choose Austin because compared to Dallas, compared to Houston, compared to Manhattan, it is such a small quaint city that is just gonna be the perfect fit for us because we don't want anything too overwhelmingly big and so on and so forth. Well, there is truth in that and there also isn't. It is a myth, it is a stereotype that Austin is one of the smaller town, smaller city options that Texas has to offer. But the truth of the matter is, Texas really is so big, so big that really, yeah, I mean, everyone knows that, right? Yeah, Texas is the biggest state, yeah, you know, as big as their ego, which is true, et cetera, et cetera. But until you're really here, I don't think people truly comprehend the magnitude of the size of Texas. Really, for example, in the Northeast, you can be in one state, drive two or three hours, be in another state, drive another hour, be in another state. New no. here in Texas, you can drive six hours and still be in Texas. You can drive nine hours and still be in Texas. It is just so big. You can fit the entire Northeast in Texas. You can fit much of the Northwest in Texas. You can fit much of Europe in Texas. And I say that because even though Austin is one of these smaller city options that Texas has to offer compared to the metropolis of Dallas or something like that, or Houston, it is still large simply because it's in Texas, if that makes sense. Being in the city itself, does it have a small city vibe? It does, especially if you're used to something much, much bigger. It is going to feel nicer and more quaint in that sense because it's not a metropolis. But as I mentioned earlier, the greater Austin area, I mean, Obviously you have your south, your east, your west, your north, Austin, but then you've also got San Marcos, you've also got Colleen, you've also got Hutto, you've also got Taylor, you've also got Georgetown, you've got Cedar Park, you've got Leander, did I say Leander yet? You've got Gerald, you've got Liberty Hill, you've got Jonestown, you've got Lago Vista. Have I lost you yet? Well, that is how big the greater Austin area is. Technically, yeah, you could say in your zip code, I technically live in Cedar Park. Yes, that is true. But Cedar Park really is just a suburb town of Austin. It, it, it is all part of the gigantic greater Austin area. So yes, even though the city is on the smaller side, do not be fooled, it is quite large. And because it's quite large, you are going to experience traffic. Yes, we have traffic. There is also going to be a lot of construction. It is going to take you longer to get from point A to point B. You are going to be overwhelmed with the different school districts and the different zip codes. So I wanted to debunk that myth if you are coming to Austin or thinking about it with 
the idea that you're just coming to some small town, some small city that's popular and hipster and contemporary and modern and eclectic and artistic, much of that is true except for the size. If it's in Texas, it's going to be bigger, even if it's small by Texas's standards. So maybe some of those dissuaded you, maybe some of those persuaded you, or maybe you already knew all of that to begin with. But if you are considering moving to Austin, Texas, that is what we're here for. We absolutely love to help people find the right commute to work, the right school districts for their children, the right nightlife for young professionals, the right golf courses, so on and so forth. We love telling our clients that really all you've got to do is worry about is packing up those boxes and we'll take care of the rest. It's what we love to do. But the only way we can do that for you is by you reaching out to us. So don't be shy, shoot us a text, give us a call, send us an email, let's get you taken care of and stick to our very unofficial motto, which is we help people, we have fun and we get it done. And once again, we put out tons of new content like this one on this channel each and every week. So if you haven't already, consider subscribing to this channel and ring the little bell so that you're notified each and every time we put out a new video. In addition, comment down below. Agreements, disagreements, questions, video ideas, we would love to get involved with you guys. Like this video as well to tell us we're doing a good enough job providing value to you to help our channel grow. And until the next one, you guys, this is Frank with Living in Austin, Texas, and we will absolutely catch you later.